The BMW M5 has always been the car you buy if you have a family, but you still feel the need to embarrass some supercars. And the new M5 is no different. You have a really nice, well-equipped four-door sedan that walks some of the fastest cars money can buy. How did BMW achieve this insane performance? I mean, she's a big girl at 1.9 tons. Well, as with all BMW M Division cars, it starts with a good power plant. So you get three versions of the new M5. The base, competition and competition sport, which is a stunner of a car. All of them are powered by a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8, but they are all tuned a bit different. I'm not going to talk about the base M5, because in most countries you can't, you can't buy one anymore. Now, if you want a new M5, you only get the competition and the CS which is coming in 2022. Let's start with the competition and then we'll talk about the CS since the comp is available now and the CS is only going to be available later. The M5 competition produces 617 horsepower and 750 newton meters of torque. All of that power is sent to all four wheels via an 8 speed torque converter automatic. But because BMW knows their clientele, you can send 100% of the car's power to the rear wheels only. Which means stuff like this is possible. while being able to do stuff like this. This is the best of both worlds. You have a 600 plus horsepower sedan that can do 6 skids and can launch like a bat out of hell. So what does 617 horsepower and an all wheel drive setup add up to? Well, 0 to 100 is reached in 2.9 seconds, which is damn fast, especially if you look at it. When you think sub 3 seconds 0 to 60, you expect the car to look like this. I mean, the Hurricane 610-4, which is the all-wheel drive Hurricane, does a 0 to 100 in 2.8 seconds. I mean, imagine buying a Lambo and not being able to drop some old dude in his family sedan. Now, how fast is it over a quarter mile? while the M5 does a 10.8 second quarter mile and tops out at just over 300 km per hour. So she is one seriously scary machine in a straight line. But since it's an M division car, it's not a slouch in the corners either. The suspension keeps it composed in the corners. The absolutely massive brakes means it stops and it stops really well. And with its amazing X-Drive system, you can lay down some great lap times. I mean, she does a 7 minute 36 around Nordschleife, which is exactly the same time as the new NSX hybrid supercar. Imagine setting the same lap times as a hybrid supercar that looks like this, and you're driving a four-door sedan with boot space and like a comfortable ride and heated seats and heated steering wheel and everything. Now to the M5 CS which isn't out yet, but there is quite a few details leaked already. Well, firstly, the CS looks insane. I mean, that's a mean looking 5 Series. But before we talk specs, let's talk price. The competition will set you back $113,000, where the CS starts at $143,000. So it's quite a bit more expensive. So, but what do you get for that extra $30,000? Firstly, a little more power, the 4.4 liter V8 in the CS is tuned to 627 horsepower, so a whopping 10 extra horses. But it's also 230 pounds lighter, which equates to like 104 kilograms lighter than the competition model, which is actually quite a lot. The CS model also takes the title for the most powerful production BMW ever, which is quite an impressive title. All the details on the car hasn't been released yet, but I do expect it to be quite a bit faster in the corners and a little bit quicker in a straight line since it's lighter. Now to the interior of the M5. It's a luxury sports sedan, so it can't have a crappy interior. BMW interiors are always stunning, but they do look fairly similar. You have a full leather interior, customizable ambient lighting, heated steering wheel and seats. The seats are also ventilated and can massage you. You have a four zone climate control system, and the car also features a 12.3 inch touchscreen. This touchscreen can be controlled through various different ways. It's got touchscreen, gesture control, voice control, and also the BMW rotary knob. 
Imagine how weird the gesture control would look to passengers that's never driven in a new car. I mean, like, imagine this dude is used to, like, a 1990 old Merc or BMW or whatever, and now he gets in the car, and you're just moving your hands funny, and then the car does stuff. It might, you must look like a bloody wizard. Anyways, I digress. If you are like me, and you like a good sounding sound system, you'll love the M5. It comes standard with a 16-speaker Haman Kardon sound system. And like with all new BMWs, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is standard. So it is a truly specced out 4-door practical sedan. You have a huge boot that can fit stuff, space for a family, and you have a rocket ship of a car. I think if you have the money, it's really difficult to fault the new M5. And just before I end of the video, I wanted to mention something. Tunability. So I like modifying cars a lot. And the new M5 is a monster stock, but with literally just a tune and downpipes, you can get 670 horsepower to the wheels. Now let me tell you why that's impressive. Remember the car makes 617 horsepower stock, but that's 617 at the crank. You lose power between the crank and the wheels, so the stock M5 actually makes around 580 horsepower at the wheels. So, with just downpipes and a tune, you are adding a good 90 horsepower to the wheels. And if we're talking crank power, you are way over 700, just with that small modification. I mean, downpipes and a tune is like seven or eight thousand dollars. It's not, it's quite expensive, but it's not crazy expensive. And you'll beat the CS with just that in a straight line. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I've got many more videos on specific cars. I've got videos that we break down like crazy bolts and stuff. I've got a bolt series on my personal BMW got a lot of crap go through it if you like motorcycles there's motorcycle content too i'll check you guys in the next one cheers i